Do you know what? It was very stop start and lethargic, but but I've come to expect that the sun looked a lot better. Um, Emerson is still absolutely fucking woeful. Um, and yeah, it's it's uh, it, 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 it's better. Listen, it's a win, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's, it's a win. We we'll take it. Should we finish the game like the way we did, hanging on? Um, uh, I know uh, uh, Barry Ranjit was was saying, you know, the five substitutes did change it, but I th yep. I could I, I can see why there were five subs. I think there was a justification behind it. There, there was. I mean, first of all, Harry Kane. I, I would have liked to see one of those subs because he looked like he took another big knock. Uh, yeah. uh, that it took a while to get up from. Um, but the one thing I will say is if we get uh, Google as our naming rights, the first thing we need to do is use Google Earth to find where Harry Kane's penalty went. Yeah. Because that <laughs> that that was shocking. Of all the things you'd think from a Harry Kane uh, penalty, you wouldn't think that. But getting back to the, uh, the subs, I'm happy to see Ollie Skip get minutes. I'm happy to see Basuma get minutes. Brian Hill came on and did his bits, but I think the best bit was his leap and his flying diving header he tried to make. <laughs> that was that was like some that was some quality gymnastic stuff. Um but very Ricky Villa esque for the penalty, wasn't it? It was, yeah, yeah. I mean yeah, it it, it, it was. He, he left the uh, defender for dead. I mean, to be fair, Frankfurt did did create it. Um I, I, what any negatives? I mean that does it will probably be a bit harsh and we're gonna pick out the faults, but does Hugo's? I mean that um, that corner was unnecessary, wasn't it? Right at the end. Yep. Hugo's yeah. Yeah. I mean, first of all, yeah, Bob and Nick, you'll know full well, and I've spoken about it for ages, and people will know when I'm at the ground or at the Scotland Yard. Hugo Lloris on the football, playing around it from the back, is one of the biggest liabilities we have. It makes me have a heart attack. My youngest niece Sophie and your youngest daughter uh, Bob have got the better distribution than Hugo. It's as simple as that. Um, That's a fact. It, his, distrib his distribution is absolutely shocking. His shot stopping is still absolutely incredible. But but what the hell was uh, Kim's favourite person, Eric Dyer, on for the first hot ten minutes? That that back that back three looked shaky uh, to start off with. And Lloris, he did it again, didn't he? With a couple of the balls when he tried to run out, he misjudged the bounce, and it went. He he seems his shot stopping is absolutely awesome. But everything else, he's on the decline. He's on the decline. And mm. and apart from that, like I said, Eric Dyer was uh, very, very lucky because that first half display was was uh, embarrassing. But mm. like we said, there's three points. The group, well, I think, we're, if, if my memory serves me right, we're actually now top of the group, aren't we? We are. We are top of the group. Seven points. Um, Marseille second on six, Sporting on six, and Frankfurt on four. And Sporting had two go, players. Simple. Sporting had two players sent off tonight as well. Which is obviously going to help us as well, and then uh, win that win that game against Sporting, and then we got a free hit against Marseille, and we can probably relax a lot of the players. Well, it it, it depends, right? In theory, we want we we probably want um, we probably want uh, Frankfurt to get we probably want that game to be a draw. So then we win, we go through with a game to spare, and we can not like you said have a kind of free have more of a free hit. Let's just say. Exactly. I mean, it it, it all depends if. Uh, if first is like the, the be or an end all for Conte in the group stages for obvious reasons, uh, maybe that will be uh, sorted as well before we play uh, Marseille. But but if we can have a free hit where he can rest, not all of them, but rest a few players so they're ready for the, the rest of the Premier League, um, it, it, it could be very, very handy and it could it could work in our favours. But but Stel, Stel said something in one of the groups I'm in, which was Conte's been here 10 months. We're third in the league. And top of our Champions League group. That's what happens when you back Conte. Who would have said that or, or, or thought that before he came? And like I said, it, it's another it's another win, and then that's two wins back to back. And hopefully, we can do it against Everton. Yeah, I mean, it, it still's right, uh, certainly with the quality of players. But Poch did, for, you know, get us to the top of the uh, Champions League uh, group, and uh, and we were what uh, chasing the title. But I think what. The dealt the cards that Conte has been dealt. I think it's even even better, and and certainly the the clubs we're, we're up against are a lot better. Any uh, comments on the refereeing today? Oh, do you know what? Uh, I think how how the guy didn't get the second yellow card, 
and then they were able to to get him off on a substitution before before he was sent off. That was a blatant sending off. Blatant. Yeah, sake. Uh, say again, Bob. He was bribed. I'll say it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I, I, FIFA, I mean, FIFA ain't watching me, mate. Or you, well, we, we, we should have had, we should have had a penalty as well. And if they did, mate, if FIFA are watching, mate, just get them to come on a wanky wank because they're as <laughs> crap as they come. So, <laughs> that would be so, good. That would be good. So, so in, it may work. Saturday um, night, what are you up to, mate? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Why not? That that'd be an interesting one. And one of your questions could be: You've been handed a brown envelope. What do you do? Um, mm-hmm. And see what the answers come. But yeah, listen, the, the referee was appalling, but. But a lot of this, like we've seen in the Premier League, it's not even it's not even a VAR at the moment where we're all complaining. It's the people yeah. running it. Yeah. It's the people running it. When it's a World Cup or a Euros, decisions are made like that. Normally, or most of the time, correct and done quickly and seamlessly. Whereas when it comes to this, it's just been absolutely uh, horrible refereeing uh, recently. And it, it continues on tonight. Yeah. Yeah, and you touched on it before, Brian. But I'm asking this question to everyone who comes on the uh, on the uh, on the on the fan show tonight. Does Hoiberg? Yes, I knew you were in a coma. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Cheers, Matt. But do, does Hoiberg get the credit he deserves? No, and I, mate, Bob, you've known me a long time, so is Nick. Now, I've been saying he's my favourite player for for a mate. You best watch your noise. I'm coming back very <laughs> shortly. I'll, I'll slap the taste out of your mouth. Um, so, so, so yeah. So, um, no, Hoiberg has been fantastic. He has been absolutely. Listen, when, when he comes, people got to remember the reason that I loved him to begin with is how he he uh, came across in his uh, his first interview, and then you see him, his dedication, his commitment. The one thing you could say, and I think every Spurs fan would agree, if you were to say right every game, the the one person you know you can guarantee is going to be fit and ready for the game, no matter what. I think every single Spurs fan says Pierre Emil Hoybier. He has been absolutely incredible. Like by, by the end of last season, he had played over a hundred games for, uh, for 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 Tottenham, Come and that's included all the European games. You you mm. you don't just do that. That's sixty eight. What's that? Seventy two games in the league. The guy is a phenomenon uh, for his fitness and the way he just recovers. And yes, we wanted to see him be more progressive, and he started to be. You just got to see. The build-up to uh, Suns volley, Emerson had the ball and fucked yeah. it up. Hoiberg yeah. wins it back, one-two, gets to the byline, and he stood up a wonderful cross. Don't yeah. get me wrong, Suns a brilliant finish, but that's not what you expect from like your defensive midfielder. Yeah. He's only getting better and better, and he deserves a hell of a lot more credit than he's getting. He has been absolutely incredible, and for me, he's our standout player this season. Period. And I think I, I think the credit comes from Conte's eighty-three starts and eighty-five, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah eighty-three. Eighty-three, 83 starts and yeah. eighty-five games yeah. that, that Conte's been in charge. And I think you know if that doesn't show, hey, if Conte trusts him, exactly. And, and you look at it; he got dropped against the in the Wolves game that I went to, where I was sitting with Nick and Rez in the West Stand. Then we moved up to the South Stand to be with uh, Danny Ben and Simon and everything, and it was the worst forty-five minutes. I think I've ever seen live at Tottenham Hotspur that first half. Mm. And then ever since then, he's been ever present. Mm. And this season, again, he has just been outstanding. And he deserves a lot of credit. A lot of credit. And I, I hope performances like this do it because I don't know, but they go, oh, he's, prog- he's sideways, sideways. He's backwards. Well, that's what Harry Winks did. And I can guarantee you he's a hundred <laughs> times better, if not a thousand times better than Harry Winks. 